Hello, and welcome to the Casino Tears podcast. I'm one of your hosts, 10 Ton is number one, and joining me as my co-host is the one and only Ed Robinson from Roll to Win Craps. If you want more info on our show, please visit our page at casinotears.com. On this week's show, we discuss losing, how we approach it, and how it makes us feel. We toast to the first episode and define a few basic playing terms. We also touch on the Rebel Flag, our Valentine's Day mug, the editing process, NASCAR, the Dog Whisperer, and Getting Heavy's Blessing. There you go, buddy. What are you drinking, Perrier? <laughs> Listen, what am I drinking? Well, you know I'm currently not drinking for a year. Yeah, so I mean, it's like soda water. Pellegrino. Oh, that's worse than Perrier. I don't know. It's it's either go with the uh, French version or the Italian version, right? I'm going to go Italian. You got to go Italian. I like the I like the flag hat, man. Dude, I knew you'd like this. The the Skinnerd in you would come out. That's the wrong flag for Skinner, dude. <laughs> well, listen, the, wrong, the acceptable, the, the acceptable. You know, nobody cared about their rebel flag back then. That rebel flag is cool looking, though. I mean, it is pretty cool looking, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. That thing's on the hood of the Dukes of Hazard. It's on the roof. Oh, it's on the roof, not the hood? No. I got to Google that. They call it the General Lee. Yeah, <laughs> General yeah. Lee. Yeah, I mean, he was good at his job. I'm a Southerner, proud of it. Yeah. That's what's going to make this podcast great. Ed, how are you feeling now that we... Uh... I'm exhausted. I've done so much. I, I, have, I have worried and fretted over this so much. I'm mentally and physically drained. What are you, what are you talking about? By, by the way, cheers to you right now, because we have successfully published our first podcast to apple today my kids my kids are jealous <laughs> really that's my great. sister my sister my sister's a little bit pissed other than that everybody else would be why is she pissed because i had to tell that story about her last time that's a good story we'll make her you know we'll give her more uh we'll talk about her a little more probably we'll bring her on as a guest someday yeah let's bring her on <laughs> she, she could talk about young ed young gambling ed so Ed, what do you mean you were uh, you were fretting about this? <laughs> I've been I've been working your ass to death trying to get you to get this stuff done, dude. Yeah, as I as I mentioned before, I have the most impatient co-host ever. Aren't you glad? Hey, Ed, I don't Aren't think you, do you realize how much work went into this in the past month just to get this and it's not uh, like a hack job, like you'll know no. that's that's what's good. I try to make first impressions count, right? Yeah, yeah. The editing process, I you know that was my first. That took ten hours to do for people that aren't aware. Like, if I'm not an editor, so I just had to dive in there. Thank God I had a, you know, a good friend of mine named Joe. He he uh he runs the entire uh video department at the uh at ucla he does all the sports you know he does all these sizzle reels yeah. and he's like it's cool but he helped me he's so good at this that he guided me while he was just on the phone he's like now you see this now you see this now you see this not even looking at it so he was a big reason why i was able to get this done website's good the website's great if the people haven't seen it it's casinotears.com and ed oh you don't even know what i've done this afternoon what get this we're uh we're gonna have a limited edition valentine's day on off mug wait till you see it man it's, it's you better hurry because it's coming up quick it looks sweet ah oh, dude you're gonna love it because the on circle is a heart i already love it i already love it i'm already jealous my phone's been blowing up all night what's the feedback been i mean it's uh, early dude we're we're fresh into this. Heavy gave you a big fat thumbs up. Heavy did? Yeah, he loved well, it. Oh, nice, dude. Then he scolded me for not remembering one of the main differences between where I play and where you live. Oh, what was it? Well, where you are, it's all three, four, five odds. Yeah. I mean, there's some places which are which are more. In Biloxi, 
they're all 10 times odds except for the IP and they're 20. That's a big difference. You know what? We got to get heavy on. We're going to have, and that's the other thing. This, this podcast is going to have some cool ass guests. So what is our episode about tonight? Do we know? Ed, this is what I want to talk to you about tonight. And I feel like it's a topic that is, I don't feel like it's really talked about enough. Maybe, uh, I want to talk about losing. What? Yeah. Everything about craps is about winning and it's all great, but specifically losing how you deal with it, how you handle losses, because we are going to lose. We're losing before we even step into the casino. Well, it's a negative, it's a negative EV. You know, we're not expected to win when we walk in the door. So if you do win, it's a shock to the system. Yeah. Yeah. Nice shot. I don't like losing. I do not roll. I do not roll to lose. <laughs> I no. roll to win. And imagine if your podcast was called Hey. <laughs> if my channel, if my channel was called Come on, everybody, let's roll to lose. <laughs> imagine if that was and I was following <laughs> this guy. Yeah, roll to lose. That would not be a, a good channel. No, it wouldn't. It is reality. We all lose. There's good losses and there's bad losses. Yeah, what's a well, what's a good loss? A good loss is when you've had a drawdown and you make almost all that drawdown back and you decide, you know what? I'm cutting it right here. I'm walking away. That's a good loss. Uh, all right. Explain the term so, drawdown. Let's just say, let's just say you're down six hundred dollars. Okay. And then you grind your way back. You you use your smarts, you use your intellect and intuition to work back in a grinding fashion, low risk type of fashion to grind back to within a hundred dollars or less of what you were down. That's a good time to just go ahead and walk. Oh yeah. I don't I wouldn't even consider that that's, no, that's cool. really a win. That's a I mean, good, that's a good loss. Yeah. That's a solid loss. You're cool with that. You're cool with walking away. I mean, I walk away all the time. I walk away with two or $300 losses just so I don't have any more. I mean, I consider myself winning if I break even, I mean, it's a win. That's kind of the reality of it. I'm grateful to walk out of there. Make no mistake about this. This is a very dangerous game. We're not, I'm not doing the public service announcement, but this is a dangerous game and it, and things can get out of hand quickly. Well, people chase losses. That's stupid. Don't do that. Every session stands on its own. So you don't want to, you don't want to blow tomorrow's bankroll trying to chase back losses tonight. That's a good point. And it's really tough to separate those especially with losses sometimes it's tough to get those out of your head i don't even think about them that's good that's because you've been playing for over 30 years because you know they're going to happen you you know you should know you're going to have losing sessions you're going to have losing hands you're going to have losing sessions it's a matter of do you have the wherewithal to walk away that's the most important question. Same problem if you're winning. Do you have the wherewithal to go ahead and leave before you lose it? That's a worse loss. When you're ahead and then you walk away a loser, that's a worse loss. Oh, totally. That is the ultimate fail to be up. And there's uh, that's a different kind of feeling leaving the casino. I can almost guarantee you 1,000%. If I am up in a session, I am never giving that money back. I mean, no, it's just not happening because it's happened before. And there's, you've been up, let's say I'm up four grand. And then all of a sudden I'm fucking down to like a couple hours later. That's a six grand swing. That is massive. And that, that walk home, it's been the walks home for me that I, that I remember. And I'm like, that is never happening to me again. And I, it won't, it just simply will not happen. When I get up, it's never going back to them being the casino. How competitive are you, Ed? 
in general. I'm a super competitive person. So when I lose, this is me off. But, but I'm usually mad at myself because this is really, this is really a game about yourself and you you controlling yourself in the game. You can't control everything that you, that happens in the game, but you can control yourself. You can control your reactions to winning and losing. And so I'm the kind of guy mentally that I do not expect to lose when I walk in. I do not expect to lose when I throw the dice. And I do not expect to throw a seven. That is confidence, ladies and gentlemen. But I know that I will throw a seven. Right. I know that it happen. I know that it will happen. That's the mentality of the shooter. That's the, the mentality that one must have to go in and be a killer. The lion. Oh, dude, I got I got a story for you. You just reminded okay. me of something. Okay. All right. You got to interrupt my interrupt yeah, Sorry, my... dude. This is too good of a story. Listen, we'll come all back right. to that. Okay. Random story. Caesar Milan. You ever you ever hear that guy? The dog whisperer? Uh, he's been on TV. I, I guarantee you almost everyone here probably has heard of Caesar Milan. He's a, he's a dog whisperer. Anyway, way back when. Is that like me? I'm the dice whisperer. You are the dice whisperer. You are actually. <laughs> Way back when, when I was going on tour, I had to drop, I had this boxer. He was amazing. His name was Tony, right? But he was, he was a little wild when I got him. I, I needed someone to watch him. So when I went on tour, I walked in, I went to Caesars. I had a friend that actually worked there. I walked into like Caesars compound and Ed, dude, I walked in there. I was scared because there were like 35 dogs and they were all badass like killer dogs aggressive dogs i mean it was i was scared i'm dropping off my dog and he's like walk through this go ahead walk and i'm like shit man you're staring at all these dogs staring at you pit bulls big dogs anyway i walk through there and i was hesitant i was actually a little apprehensive and then he was like no 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 you don't walk through there like that you gotta walk through with confidence dude you gotta be confident you got to be the alpha dog when you walk through those dogs. Exactly. And listen, I got there. It was just like, that was, I was not expecting to be confronted by a pack of like dogs that are like in prison. So, but I learned a lot from that. And that's kind of that attitude that you have. You go in there. I have that same attitude. Now, when I go to the crap table, I'm going there to actually like beat this baby down. That's the only attitude you should go with. My opinion. I mean, a lot of people go to have fun and party and all that. I don't have a problem with that because I'm probably not going to be at the table when you are anyway. So there you uh, go. But then you, you get, you're talking about losing. I mean, you, you lose sometimes just because you're stupid. I mean, you just, you play stupid. Are you, you're playing with other friends. I've had this happen in Biloxi a few months back. And I kept going, I think we ought to just get off this table. I think we ought to leave. And nobody wanted to leave. And dummy me would just hang around and we all got killed. I actually do like when I have someone there because usually I will sometimes maybe tend to force it. Sometimes if I'm by myself, a little, maybe a hair too long. And usually if you're with someone else, they're just I feel like we they're not going to force it either. I feel like sometimes I get up a little earlier from a table with someone and just happy. Yeah, I like I like playing when 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 you're playing with somebody who's kind of got the same attitude but almost at the same time you'll look at each other and you'll both go it's time to go. And and if one does it, the others will go yes, I agree. Even if they don't agree, they'll go ahead and say, "Yep, it's time to go." If one in the group, if, if one in the group is done, we're all done. Yeah, there's something to be said about that. It's like having a like a like a designated driver almost. Yeah, a designated quitter. Yeah. <laughs> but I, not I tell, but in a good way. A designated tell, quitter. Yeah, in a I good tell way. the dealers. Yeah. I tell the dealers, I'm coloring up. Just call me a quitter. Uh, to me, it's uh to me, I lose respect for men that are my age and older that are 
little fucking babies, babies. and bitches because it, yeah. like a, you have to if you're going to play this game and pony up to the table with any sort of bankroll i don't care what it is you have to be prepared you like you have to know the consequences and 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 be able to handle some some really bad beats i mean well people don't set loss go loss you know loss limits they don't set win goals they don't conserve their winnings in some fashion uh those are all issues that people have to learn if they want to be successful in this game, because this game will eat you alive. If you're not controlling your emotions, not controlling your decisions and your behavior. I feel like how you lose is it's easy to win. Part of the reasons I don't play poker anymore, Ed, is because I want, I would love tournaments, but I was so frustrated on walking home after playing, you know, making day two, making the end of day two, and then you play perfectly, you do exactly what you need to do, which is force your opponent to make the wrong decision, and you get it in good, and then you're just, it's a two-outer, guy gets lucky. I would be so upset because I felt like I did everything right. I would be so angry that that was an issue, and that's why I stopped playing poker because I felt like at least with craps, it's I. I'm the only person to win to to blame or you know or compliment on a session. You're responsible for your bets, and you're responsible for how you throw the dice. How the dice land? There's a lot of debate on that. We won't even go into that tonight. But they only pay you for the numbers that land on top, or they only clean off the top of the surface by what lands on top. Right? Yep. So people, you know, when I throw a seven, it's like I said earlier, I don't, I, I, I don't expect to throw a seven. If I expected to throw a seven, I just lay the back wall. Yeah. Right. Correct. So I don't expect to roll the seven. So when the seven shows, I back away and I mentally go through that shot and I go, what did I do? to cause that. And sometimes I can't come up with a good answer. It just happened. But sometimes it's my grip. It re I released it too soon. I rolled my wrist. There's all these other little things that you can do that'll screw up a good shot. So I always blame myself for the seven, sometimes probably unfairly, but I don't get all upset and mad. I just kind of refocus and I play that I play that toss in my mind. What did I just do that caused that? I missed my landing zone. Okay, dummy. Why did you miss your landing zone? You didn't concentrate. Whatever. You've got to, that's the way I approach it. That's the way I approach it. That, Ed, that's what I like about you. So you, you're you not going, oh, you're not blaming the chip. You're blaming that that the dice I don't is. Worry. You're, you're, yeah. blaming, you're blaming you, yourself for. Yeah. Yeah, because if I hit a chip, it's my fault. I mean, it, exactly. It's not. It's not somebody put it in my way. It's that. It's that I let that chip interfere with my focus, and instead of landing beside the chip, I landed right on top of it. But sometimes, and I have done this at home, I practice landing on chips because I want to see if it really makes a difference. Well, okay. Drum roll, please. Does it? In my opinion, not much, if any. Wow. I've had I've had just as long a rolls throwing and landing on top of a chip and then letting them hit the back wall. And I mark my numbers and I'll keep it, you know, and I, you know it, it all works out the same. It all works out. That's fascinating because as we all know. Oh, everybody blames the chip. All right, hit the freaking chip. We've seen many a roll where it just hits that chip, and then all of a sudden it's a seven. Well, let's see. What's that saying? There's a saying. When it hits the money, it rolls funny. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> but we need yeah, more of those. Again, I can't really. I, mean, I don't like to hit them. I'd rather not hit them. Yeah. For sure. But I think, I think it's also important in your practice to set up chips in your way 
so that you can focus. And some of my really good roles on my home table, just practicing and videos and all that kind of stuff is when I've got chips in my way down there, it's making me focus to like drop it right over the top of them nice. or right in front of drop shot. Have you witnessed any like serious cry babies like when they lost? <laughs> have you, any, have you witnessed any tantrums that are worth talking about? They, the ones that are, come on seven, you know, they're, you know, and the dice are coming to you and they're throwing some chips out there. Go hop to seven, right? Um, That's not nice. And hollering seven, seven, seven. All they're trying to do is just get in your head. Yeah. And it's not hard to get in somebody's head. So I just color up. So you go, you know, go find somebody else to play with, jerk. Yeah, nice. Taking your toys out of the sandbox, bed. Yeah, I, I got my <laughs> own sandbox play. I ain't played in his. <laughs> Plenty. So, you know, it's, I, I don't like jerks either way. I don't like crazy drunks that are, you know, betting a hundred dollar hard ways and, you know, lo and behold, they hit one and they're all, you know, they're doing laps around the casino while you're waiting on them to come back. You know, there's nothing going on. And, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's like getting in the end zone. You win with grace. Yeah. And you lose courteously. Please, everyone rewind that and listen to it about 1000 times yeah act like you've been there before ed can i tell you that reminds me of one of the best compliments i ever got i'm going to tell you okay yeah yeah yep yeah. all right way back when mandalay bay i had just walked in there i was with my girlfriend at the time we walked in there and there's a floor guy who's I'm sorry, but what kind of what kind of CNI dog did she have? <laughs> yeah, can't. Yeah, I'm sorry. Exactly. Tell her I'm sorry. No, that's and good. She... Yeah. So, uh, the floor guy was walking out. It was on his break. He was walking right towards us. Uh, I don't know if he's still there. He was an Asian guy, but I swear to God, he should have been Italian in another life. He walked right up to us and he said to my girlfriend. Do you know who you're with? You are with the nicest guy in the casino. And then this is something that I'll never forget what he said. He loses the same way he wins. He's always nice. That I always remembered because you have to take these beatings. Like when you lose, it sucks. But you have oh, yeah. to take them with what you just said. With grace. I've never forgotten that. I actually thought that was one of the nicest things that someone, that people notice how you lose because there's a lot of sore losers and it's especially tough to in lose. Your town. It's well, tough everywhere. to lose, man, at anything. It is tough. And especially if you're competitive. Yeah. But see, there's a difference between being competitive and being the person who's there, who's got to win right now because they just bet their rent money. Oh, man. I know that's a whole another can of worms. <laughs> that, that situation is not good. Oh, Ed, okay, listen. So this is what people don't know. So when I told you that we were going to have a vent line, I initially had a different name, like I had a different dial number for that instead of no seven. My first number that I bought was I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because I was like, ah, oh, people bitching about this and like 229, I'm a baby. But actually, and then I ended up getting no seven, which is way better. And you loved it. Way better. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't like the I'm a baby. On no, but it is funny though. Someone calling a number like I'm a baby because they're actually. We ready. can get the baby to cry. Wah, wah, wah. I got rid of that. So that is available now. I canceled that number today. Good for you. You like the vent line. I can't wait for that. Thank you for advertising the uh, the show today on your channel. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. I like. I, like I said, I want. I want them to vent about us. You know, they can bitch about me or you or us, the show, something we said that they didn't like, or they can call us and give us a, a vent about some casino that ripped them off in their eyes, or a really nasty stick man, box man, whatever, or. Preferably, we'd like to hear a few wins here and there too. Yeah, I those are the best stories. 
So I got a lot of calls. A lot of these listeners, they're new. They're new to the craps world. They're coming in. That's a that's a good thing about this podcast and where we're, the platform we're on is that we're going to get not necessarily just all craps players. And I think the appeal is going to be wider to just gamblers in general. Right, right. Two of these guys in particular, they come from like a poker playing background and a slot playing background where they identify as poker players and slot players. So they had a good suggestion, Ed, and I think it's, I think it's really uh, smart that we, we sometimes take it for granted how advanced we are or how long we've been playing that we throw out terms that a lot of these players are like, well, what does this mean? I wish you would have said, what, what's this mean? What's this mean? And what's this mean? So maybe sometimes after, and hopefully a lot of the old guys here or people that listen to you won't mind, but if we quickly like touch on a couple terms, just so that people are learning. Yeah, because it is, it is a, uh, when you, when you walk up to the craps table for the first time and you're just kind of standing there or staring and watching, it's, it, it's kind of intimidating. It is very intimidating for the first time. So, you know, so we can do that. We can, we can go over terms. Dude, I got a couple. I wrote down four. Okay. These are the easy ones. And then two from this episode that I know for sure. Three. Okay. First one, and this is what they brought up. And then when we were talking about position, so stick left one, stick right one. It's so simple. Well, you got the stick man. You got, you know, they're carrying a stick. They're the ones that rake the dice. They're in control of the center of the table. In fact, they're the boss of the table, actually, when they have the stick. They're the ones that rake the dice to the shooter. So when you say stick left, you're talking about the left side of the stick, the stick person. Stick left one would be the first slot right beside the stick. Stick left two is the second slot, third, so on. Stick right, same thing, just the other side, right side of the stick. There's always there's always confusion about the what you know the the corners but so as you go from left to right from the stick those are what we call the hook when it makes the bend towards the flat yeah it's cool man saying you're on the hook I'm all yeah because i shoot i shoot cool. yeah you know, i was i used to i used to have to shoot from the hook when we shot in groups uh you shoot from the hook then you got straight out which is just the straight end of the tables and then it goes over there close to where one of the dealers is standing. You know what I call that? Probably the uh, wrong thing. Base. No. Yep. I guarantee you it's called base. Nope. Okay. We, it's well, called the well, turn. It's yo, called the you turn. Really? I call it base. No. Right but next to I base. don't care what you call it. It's, 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 <laughs> it's really called the turn. The turn is where it turns to the other direction. Yeah, that would make sense. I've all, I don't know. <laughs> I've always, I had a dealer tell me that that was next to base. Well, you can be next to his base, but it's still the turn. Hook, straight out, turn. I have heard it called base, but I think the official term is the turn. All right, we'll call it turn. So that's it about position. The other was uh, draw down, drop shot, and lay the back wall. Those are complicated terms. I mean, in the simplest way, how would you define drawdown? Because you use that, you were talking about that tonight. You're talking about drawdown down of your bankroll? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you buy in with, let's just say you buy in with $500 and suddenly you've only got 300 in your rack, then you've got a drawdown of 200. You've got a drawdown and you've got to get back to even before you can make a profit. That's a cool term. Drop shot. Yep. Drop shot is where you're tossing the dice with kind of a high arc and you have to be careful. You can't throw them above the stick man's eyes. And that's to protect the house and the other shooters. Uh, okay. Every, every person has a job when the dice are moving and when the dice are out and when the dice, every person has a job and the stick man has got to follow the dice. And so they're not supposed to be above his eyes. So you're trying to drop it with very little spin, very close to the wall. Just drop it right into the pocket. Nice, dude. Nice. Okay. Next question was, and this is going to be tough, man. Lay the back wall. 
Lay the back wall is easy. Okay. Lay the back wall, for example, you could lay all the numbers. You could, in other words, you're going to bet that you're going to throw a seven before you throw any of those numbers on the boxes up there, four, five, six, eight, nine, or 10. So if you lay it, you're betting against the number. You're betting that a seven will show. So if you're laying the back wall, you're trying to shoot a seven on the very next throw and all six of those numbers win at the same time. If you put a $30 bet on all six of those numbers after the house edge is taken out or the vigorish as they call it and in, in, uh, it's really a commission, think of it that way. You're going to win a hundred and I think it's $111 or 116. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but $30 lay on each number and throw a seven. You win 116, 111 or 116. Laying the back walls for cold tables. When you say, no, that's for coming out. That's, that's to build your bank roll up before you, you can use the house money to bet with. That's the way I look at it. The only time I'm going to lay the only time I'm going to lay the back wall is when I'm shooting on the come out and I'm trying to throw a seven. That way I can win house money. I win $111. Then I can bet 110 on the inside numbers with house money. And I had never touched my money. I'm never trying to throw a seven on the come out, but that's a, that's another story. I had some feedback. Maybe we can talk about a, uh, a couple of the emails that we got. Oh, love to, love to. Did they, did they, did they write to no seven at casino tears.com? Yes. Okay. So uh, okay, we, good. we got our first official email was from a guy named Richard Paleo. I think I'm pronouncing his name, right? P U L E O. He, he's yeah. the first one, dude. He is the perfect. Thank you. I don't know where he's, I, I forget where he's from. I don't know where he's from, but he said he's, it was short and sweet. He said he's coming out to Vegas. He might be staying at Aria. So in May. So Richard, if you do, uh, he asked about the tables there. You don't know about the tables at Aria, do you? I know nothing about the tables at Aria because I've only heard they were bouncy. And so I don't go where I hear. When I hear that word, I don't go. Since that's right below me, it's kind of like home home field. And I don't know if there's a home field advantage. They can be bouncy. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird. It seems like sometimes they're a little more bouncier than, than other times, but Richard, we'll have coffee for sure. And play those tables. I would love that. That'd be amazing. Second email is <laughs> dude. It's by John Evans had a little uh, email combo with him. This guy's great. Nor Northern California. And, uh, he, okay. sent a, he sent a couple emails in just for support. I don't know him, but that's great. Yeah, Thank you, dude, John Evans. I don't know how they found this. Maybe through you, Ed. He might be out for NASCAR weekend, which I will NASCAR week in Vegas, and I will be there. I need. When is that? I need to come. That's like beginning of March, dude. Oh, that's too soon. That's too soon. I mean, because I, I grew up, I, I mean, I, I live in NASCAR country. Talladega. Tal Talladega is 30 miles from my house. I've been there a gazillion times. Ed, I've never uh, been to a NASCAR race. Oh, you need to come to Tal you need to come to Talladega. Uh, dude, I'm scared. I probably love it. I was at the inaugural Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis and have been to three of those sitting in a suite. Or at least maybe it was just two. But anyway, I was at the inaugural one. In fact, I was at we're not we're not really wrapping this up well, are we? But no, I was it's going on. <laughs> I was at the year before the Brickyard 400. I was there when they were testing the NASCAR. Richard Petty comes out in his infamous 43, and he does a bunch of laps all by himself because he's the first NASCAR driver ever to wheel a car onto the Indianapolis Speedway. And he sped around, and then they put it in uh, the museum there. Uh, then they, there was a bunch of other knuckleheads from NASCAR running around there, a couple of Bodine brothers, a bunch of other guys. And they all decided they were going to have, they were all practicing and this and that. And I mean, I'm like, I've got like pit passes and all this stuff and I'm walking down and I'm with all these, you know, indie car people. I mean, they're like, you know, suit and tie indie car people. And I'm a redneck from Alabama and I look around and I tell them, I said, look, 
this pit that this, this pit that they're using here, this will never fly on NASCAR track. I said, they'll be tearing this stuff down and building a new one. Guess what? As soon as they were, as soon as they were done, they started tearing out the pit and rebuilding it so that it would accommodate the NASCAR. I have, by the way, I have referred to you and you can at 1000%. I have referred to you one time as the Richard Petty of crafts. <laughs> the Richard Petty. The ri I, I have yeah, I, I, I have referred to you as Richard Petty of Crafts one time and the Burt Reynolds of Crafts. The Burt Reynolds, dude. I was just watching. I was just losing brain cells by watching Smokey and the Bandit. Ooh. Burt Reynolds is fucking awesome. Yeah, but this had Dom DeLuise and Charlotte the Elephant in it. D Dom DeLuise is amazing. I don't it know. Was, if you... I'm sitting there laughing at myself for watching it. Did you ever see uh, uh, uh History of the World? Mel Brooks. Yeah. Dom DeLuise is in that. It's oh, good yeah. to be. It's good to be the king. Anyway, John. John, yes, Evans. He spells his name with no H, though. He's J O N. Yeah, well, he's probably named Jonathan. I know a J O N N. That's a very, very, very busy weekend. I mean, you got to be a diehard NASCAR fan to want to go hang out in that crowd at Vegas. That's the great thing about Vegas, man. It's like rodeo, NASCAR. Everyone's out here, all the time. There's always something new going on. Well, I appreciate those people writing to you and uh, letting us know that they listened. I really do. Yeah, I wrote them back. I'm always going to I'm always going to write back anyone that writes. Oh, right. absolutely. Yeah. OK, so listen, Ed, let's wrap this episode up. It's a little glimpse into the future. Uh, next week's show. I'm so excited about it, dude. I really am. <laughs> it's going to be one of the most exciting shows for me just because it, it's the thing that makes me laugh the most. And that is all of the handles. It'll take days to go over the handles. We've man. already mentioned, you know, in a couple episodes, we've already mentioned heavy, happy Van Winkle, mud slide Mac, all of these great names. And there's tons of them. There's old school names. There's new school names. There's yes. so many of them. Absolutely. That's coming up. I can't wait to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about your upcoming trip. We can't mention that right now. No, we'll do that on the next show. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and we'll tell all of your fellow craps playing friends about it. Please follow Casino Tears on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. If you like the show, please rate it five stars and leave a review. The best and most fun way to contact us would be to call and leave a message on our official Casino Tears vent line, 229 no seven. You can also email us at no7 at casinotears.com. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. And lastly, to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash casinotears. On behalf of Roll to Win Craps from Alabama and 10 Ton is number one from Las Vegas, thanks for listening.